Good morning and welcome uh, to service this morning. It's good to see each and every one of you here. If you're a first time visitor, if you'll uh, take a visitor card and fill it out and stick it in the offering when the offering time is up, uh, we would love to have some correspondence with you. Uh, by way of announcements, we certainly want to um, let everyone know about, uh, I'm sure you got the email, Sister Betty Sutton passed away. Um, I'm not sure about the, the uh, services yet. Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow, it's a graveside tomorrow at 2 uh, p.m., and uh, I guess we will be feeding the family. So if you'll see uh, Sister... Okay, after the service, we'll be feeding the family. So if you'll see Sister Nell and let her know what you'll uh, help out so they can get a balanced meal uh, for that. Let's don't forget uh, Monday evening prayer meeting at 7 p.m. here in the uh, sanctuary. There will be an elders meeting on Tuesday, February the 15th at 7 p.m., also, upper room prayer is on Sunday evenings at 5.30. And there's going to be a, um, the Eastern North Carolina Women's Conference is coming up for 2022. It says, uh, replenish to bloom. That will be on March 4th and 5th at the Kenley Conference Center. The keynote speaker will be Amanda Crabb, and the worship leader will be Bailey Talley. The early bird registration fee is $65, and that covers your um, hotel stay and three meals. Um, according to Sister Kim, and that needs to be to state office by February the 16th. I'm not sure what the price is after the early bird, but we'll go we'll get that to you. But if you like, uh, would like to, ladies, if you'd like to attend that, please see Sister Kim for more details. On Sunday, February 27th, we'll be receiving new members into the church and having a baptismal. So if you're interested in church membership or being baptized, please let Brother Craig know as soon as possible also youth camp is coming up uh, in your bulletin is the dates for each one so if your kid or grandkid is interested in uh, going to that please see sister bateman for more information hallelujah praise the lord this morning Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Praise God. I want to start out with a praise report from Brother Kenny. Praise God. Um, his, let me get it right, the residual disease from the bone marrow test showed no residual disease, no cancer, cancer free. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of course, that's what we expected. When, when you go into prayer expecting a good report, God's going to honor you praying his word back to him to see that good report. So we want to do that with these needs as follows. Sister Carrie Maudlin says, remember Connie and Bub Watson? Connie found out Friday she has pancreatic cancer. So let's lift up Connie in our prayers this morning and continually. Also, a prayer request for Jimmy Dunlow has pneumonia and heart problems, so let's remember that need this morning. Um, Sister Tammy and Brother Ray, let's remember their family. Brother Ray's sister passed yesterday of bone cancer. She was 59. Her name was J Janie Harris Kovic. So let's remember Brother Ray and Sister Tammy during this time and all the family. Um, there's a prayer request for Beth Cutler. Please continue to pray for salvation and a physical healing. Um, Sister Teresa Mobley says, remember Terry and Jeff, they are both um, recovering and dealing with COVID right now as well as Geneve Branch also with COVID. So let's lift them up in our prayers. And also remember the Taylor and Mobley family, they have lost a loved one. So let's remember that family in our prayers. Um, and also a prayer request for Joe White is in the Greenville Hospital, had a stroke and had a brain bleed and has surgery and on dialysis 24 7 needs a miracle that is joe white so let's lift up that need as well are there others that you would like to raise your hand to represent this morning praise god remember who we're praying to remember who he is and what he's already accomplished and his word changes not and he's more than worthy to be honored and praised this morning as we give him these needs knowing he's already working in the midst hallelujah Oh, he is so bountifully good, is he not? And we are able to take these needs to him in prayer and approach the throne room of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel his touch this morning. God, we come before you today. God, we praise you for what you've done, God, all you've done for us. God, thank you for Calvary, God. Thank you for the stripes we're placed upon our Savior's back. God, we thank you, Father, that you woke us up this morning. 
God, we took another breath and our hearts beat another beat. God, we thank you for it this morning, God. We praise you for the opportunity to come into your house this day. God, to worship you, to praise you, to honor you. God, to bless your people today, Father. Oh, God, we just pray, Father, that all these are blessed, my goodness. God, so many are sick and afflicted, God. So many are facing uh, terrible situations. God, we know that you're the God of miracles. We know that you are God who hears our cries. Oh, God, we're just like the children of Israel when they were down in Egypt. Dear God, you heard their cries. And Father, we cry out to you this morning. Dear God, for these that are sick, God, for COVID, God, these that are uh, facing uh, cancer, these that are facing uh, all these other uh, sicknesses and disease and afflictions, dear God, we cry out to you, Father. God, these that have lost loved ones, God, we pray that the Holy Spirit of God will just hover over them right now. God, bring comfort to them and peace. Dear God, those that are bound in their minds this morning, dear God, have anxieties or fear or depression. Dear God, we speak peace to them right now. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, just as you stood, God, in that boat, and you spoke peace to the winds and the waves, and they laid down at your feet. Dear God, we speak peace to those minds that are troubled this morning. Dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind every power of hell that's coming against them. Father, what we know is a tool of Satan. But dear God, right now we take authority over it. And we claim deliverance and freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, do a mighty work in this service today, Father. God, we come into your favor today, God. In your mercy and your grace, dear God, that your will might be accomplished. Oh, God, we thank you for all that you've done. God, we're careful to praise you. And the church said, amen and amen. Please remain standing.
That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king. Cause he gave his everything. Cause he gave his everything. That's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king. Cause he gave here this morning is thankful and grateful and Amen. just want to thank everybody for the way they give in this church and uh, thank the ones that's, that's out there watching online that give and, and pray for our church, our brothers and sisters in Christ and bind together in unity. There's no telling what God's got in store for us this year. We've been through a lot of storms, a lot of heartaches, a lot of hard times, but he's still on the throne, folks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's still in control. We've been going through a lot of storms, but he's the master of the storm. He's going to help us. And he's going to bring us through. It can't be much longer. Amen. So be encouraged. Amen. Keep pressing forward. Praise God. Let's pray over this offering. We'll get done praying. You can come and give your gift to the Lord. Father, we do thank you this morning, God. That we can be in your house together, Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ. And loving our Lord and blessing our Lord this morning, we praise you, God. Bless those that have to give. Those that may not have to give that, Lord, desire to give, Lord. God, I pray that you'll bless them to be able to do that, Father. Lord, keep your hand of grace and mercy upon this congregation. Those, our brothers and sisters in Christ that are watching, the people that's watching online, Lord God, we speak a blessing over them, Lord God, and we're thankful, Lord God. Lord, as you're moving, Lord, in the midst of this congregation this day, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm singing a song that I've sung many times, but it was requested that I sing it today. You know, you can't do a thing about yesterday. Can't change it. It's about where you are today. Where God has brought you to and what you do with your service to Him. Your desire to live for Him, to touch another life. You know, we, our world's in a mess, and I don't need to tell anybody here that today. We need God. The world needs God. And our desire should be to see somebody else come to the cross. Let us not lose sight of the cross. Hallelujah. Let it be our desire to serve Him and worship Him and make a difference in our world. Worship with me this morning.
it's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire oh, to live for Him.
Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Come on, lift your hands and let that be your heart's prayer this morning. You know, I was thinking about that song Sister Ann was singing, and then that one there is just, you know, the Lord just requires you not just a little bit, but requires it us all. Amen. God, if you can use me, use me, Lord. God, if I can serve you, let me serve you this morning, God. And I just, I love that part of that song Ann was singing a while ago. That if you could see where the Lord has brought me from. Yeah to where we are today. Would you lift your hands and thank God, amen, that you're not, maybe you're not all that you need to be, but you're not what you used to be. Come on and worship him this morning, amen. Give him glory and honor in this house this morning. He is so worthy to be praised. Would you say amen, amen, hallelujah. Thank y'all. Turning your Bibles to Psalm 15, it's so good to see you in the Lord's house this morning. Thank you for being here. You know, we're, we're almost getting close to being back to capacity I guess with our when I say capacity people coming back um, it's almost like we're doing shift work around here because this crowd will get sick and they'll get better and the next crowd will get sick but we're we've got a number that are still recovering and uh, still quarantining and some uh, going through the COVID so just continue to pray it's been a mess I don't have to tell you that it's been a mess for all of us our family experienced it about three weeks ago and just uh we, we're going to get through it. This too shall pass one day. Amen. Psalm 15, I want you to read verses 1 and 2. Follow along with me. It said, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Then it said, He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness. And I love this part. And speaketh the truth in his heart. Amen. God's looking for some people that will worship him. Will you say amen? Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you know what we have need of. Lord, you know what the needs are presented in here today, God. Each and every one of us, Lord, are at a different place in our walk with you. Each and every one of us are facing uh, challenges and difficulties, uh, trials and tribulations. Some of us are facing uh, demonic hordes of uh, uh, attacks that are coming against us. We're all in different places in our journey. But we're, no matter where we are, we're in the right place today to receive help and comfort from the Word of the Lord and from the presence of God. And today, Lord, we want to uh, bless you. We want to ask you now to bless the reading and preaching of the Word and the, those that will hear, those precious young people in the back, our staff back there teaching, our, our, our children in children's church. Lord, that your hand would be upon them also. Lord, and we give you praise for all of these. And everybody say amen. And amen. God bless you as you're seated. And thank again to thanks again to our musicians, our home, uh, our, our singers, our, uh, our praise team, all that all that are working for the Lord. We do appreciate you. I do want to stay before we get started this morning in the message. Let us continue to remember uh, the family of Betty Sutton, uh, and certainly uh, all of them, of course, but uh, uh, certainly Kathy. Murphy, who's lost not only her husband about five weeks ago, but also her mother uh, just passed a couple of days ago. So we want to remember them, and uh, that funeral will be Monday uh, at 2 o'clock. I believe it's going to, is it Pamlico Gardens at Oak, Oakdale? And the, the uh, phone tree will go out this afternoon. Uh, informing you of all of that, and then we'll feed the family afterwards. And so we just, we'll certainly miss uh, Sister Betty. I uh, had an, a wonderful, wonderful conversations with her just a month or two ago over uh, in the hospital in Newburn and just sat and talked. And uh, she was a talker. She loved the Lord. She loved this church. And uh, we're going we're gonna to certainly miss her. And, uh, and if you can be of uh, any encouragement, of any help during this time with the family, please, please do so and reach out to, uh, uh, to them. As you notice, there's a lot of people that were that are that's been that's gone. A lot of people's left us from this church in probably the last uh, six months, probably not even that, maybe ten or twelve in the last three or four months, and and just the uh, just the four and a half years that we've been here, my wife and myself and my daughter, uh, a number of people. Uh, so I just say all that to say this: we miss them. Uh, death is always uh, always hard to deal with, but it pays to be ready. 
Pays to be ready because we don't know when we're going to leave this world. I was visiting in the hospitals yesterday, different situations, and um, was uh, uh, went up to the um, uh, ICU unit here in Beaufort County, uh, by Beaufort, and uh, there were went to visit, uh, uh, check on a, a no, they're not affiliated with our church, some family friends of mom and dad from back in the day, so to speak, and. I was on the ICU floor, and there was still a number of people there on, on ventilators and uh, with COVID. I assume that's what it were, and this particular man was. And, I, you know, it just lets you know how fragile life really is, people of God. And so I start this sermon off not to discourage you with that thought, but to encourage you with this thought. You've been placed on planet Earth to serve him. You've been placed on planet Earth to live a life for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can promise you, you will never find your total fulfillment, your purpose on this earth until you realize you were created to worship God. Amen. There is nothing like lifting up hands, worshiping God, and feeling the presence of the Lord. And, and worship is not an act simply that we do. It is a life that we live. You can worship the Lord anywhere. Matter of fact, will you just lift your hands with me in solidarity and let us worship. Come on, lift your voices and worship the Lord in this place. Give him the glory and the honor that is due his name. Some of us have been sick. Some of us, you know, when, when I was sick this last time, I think I've had this mess twice already, but when I was sick this last time, I was just thankful to be able to get back to the house of God and to feel the presence of the Lord and to be with the people of God. And we, we've got to realize these perilous times that we are in are pointing us to a truth that the Lord is soon to return. And I'm not going to preach on the coming of the Lord, but the Lord's return is imminent. The, re, the return of the Lord is sooner than what we think. And I believe that God is trying to get the church ready. And I believe that the, God is trying to let the world see that this thing is going to wrap up before too long and that we need to serve him and love him and worship him and give him all that we can. Would you say man? God created man with the unique ability and only man. I know we, we love our animals. I, I know you do. There's many of us that have, that have, had, that have pets and animals and, and there's many of us here in the church, you love your animals some more than you love other people. I get that. Uh, you know, one thing about a good faithful companion like a dog and is that he don't never get angry with you, don't never talk back. Come on here, you know, and they, you know, they always are glad to see you and, and, and all of that, and, and, and uh, a lot of us uh, love animals and so forth. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful relationship. Uh, many of you had animals or dogs or cats, and I don't know about a cat, and I'm just going to tell you, but anyway, uh, an old dog will be your friend and lay at your feet and you have them for a long time. And, but, you know, of all of God's creation. Of all created beings and of all, all types of life that is out there, only mankind is created with the ability, the innate ability in us to worship God. Come on here and say amen. Why don't we give the Lord the worship and the glory that is due him? Amen. My goodness, amen. He gives us the breath in our body. He places the food on our table. He controls the weather. Come on here, church. What a mighty God we, and you know, he just, uh, and all of this that we know is, as the children of God, we are created. We're here, everybody. I can't, I don't, if you don't get anything else, listen to me, young people, old people, and all in between, you're here on planet Earth to worship God and to serve God. There is something inside of us that knows, amen. You know, Kimberly and I were witnessing to a, uh, to a, a dear lady the other day, and uh, I believe this lady is probably in a backslidden condition and, and uh, the Lord opened the door and we were just sharing and crying and talking about the Lord and, and, uh, and, and you know, we just could see the, the hand of the Spirit uh, just touching this lady who had been serving the Lord and had a, a wonderful relationship with God many years ago and had fell away from She got hurt in church. Uh -huh. She got hurt and she got disillusioned by all the hypocrisy and the foolishness that she saw in church. And that's no excuse to leave or to backslide, but it does happen. That's why the Bible says to, to woe to them that bring offenses. Come on here now. 
Uh, God help me never to bring offense. Amen. Hey, amen. Come on here, church. And, and so we were pray, We were talking with this lady, and I just looked at her. I said, honey, you're never going to have that peace that you once had until you get right with God. There's no amount of finances. There's no amount of success. There's no amount of, uh, of friends or uh, uh, relationships that you have. All of these are wonderful. I don't know about you. I love to be blessed. I'm blessed. I've got a great relationship with my wife and my children. I, I love my church family. I love being in the house of God with the people of God. But nothing, nothing, nothing satisfies me like the Lord. The old, the old black preacher said one time, can't nobody do me like the Lord. I found that to be true. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Come on and say amen. But God requires something in us if we're going to be true worshipers. Here we see that God's dealing with those in, in, in Psalm chapter 15 and those that who shall uh, abide in that tabernacle, who shall dwell in that holy hill, he that walketh Uprightly, God is still looking for men and women that will live right and walk right. It is harder, I believe, now than it's ever been. I believe this now. To live holy, separated, and sanctified lives in, in this day and age that we live in. Never before have we seen in our time. I'm talking about the American culture. I'm talking about society that you and I live in. We've never seen, we've never ever seen such adverse conditions to being a Christian. You better open your eyes and you better see, honey, we are not popular. You better realize, amen, that, our, that the days are numbered that we'll be able to get up and preach the way that I'm preaching. I can tell you things that are going on. There is a a preacher in Finland today that has been arrested for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and he's arrested. And you know what they charged him with? A hate crime. A hate crime for preaching the gospel. You say, well, bless God, thank God we're over here in America and we'll never, let me tell you something, it's coming here. It's coming to America. We are seeing the tradition. America was founded on the principles of Judeo-Christian worldview. The pilgrims and those Puritans came over here for, to be able to worship in freedom. I could give you illustration after illustration of the founding fathers and the and the uh, the constitutions of states and and the constitution of the United States of America. You can look at all even on our money. It says in God we trust, and I could go on and on. We we were founded on a biblical foundation, but that foundation is trying to be undermined by the Antichrist spirit. Come on here. But wake up, church of the living God, and lift up your head. God is still in control, amen, and God is still seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And I've made my mind up like Brother Kenny, amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I believe if me and Brother Kenny would have run into each other about 35, 40 years ago, it might have been a mess. It wouldn't have been pretty, he said, amen. And I got a feeling that if I'd have run in some of y'all a while back, it might not have been pretty. But bless God today, amen, we're saved, sanctified, filled with heaven, sweet Holy Ghost, and on our way to heaven, amen, God is still looking for those that will worship him and give him all that they have. How many will say with me, amen, I've come too far. I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm going to worship. I'm not giving up. I'm not slacking up. I'm not backing up. I'm not pulling. Come on now. I'm going to serve you, Lord. God is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and truth. God's looking for people that are deal, how to deal with others in this life, how to live holiness. God is looking for people that are holy and separate. I, I just said that there are, we're living in a time which is more difficult to live for the Lord than it's ever ever been in our lifetime. Now, I know we don't face the persecution that the early church did, and it's a good thing because back then they used to throw them to the lines for entertainment. They'd burn them at the stake. Nero, the Roman emperor, was known to dip Christians in tar and to tie them on post and to set them afire so that he could have light in his garden. We've seen the time that the 
gladiators would, would, would murder Christians in the Colosseums or that whole families and Christians would be put out in, 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 in the Colosseums and their wild beasts would be let go, let loose on them, tearing them to shreds while the people in the stadiums, like, a, like it was a, a sports contest, they would be cheering as people of God just like you and I were being torn to shreds. Let me tell you something, we're not facing anything like that yet. But make no mistake about it, people of God. We're living in a day when our nation is thumbing its nose and, and, and pointing its finger in the face of God. And the church better wake up, amen. And the church better rise up and we better realize, amen, who we are and who we serve, amen. I'm here on planet earth. No matter how long God gives me, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to serve him. And I'm going to tell everybody I can about a Savior that can reach down and pull you out. It it does not matter what is going on. It does not matter what sin somebody is bound up in. There is a deliverer, and he delivered us, and he can deliver them, and that's why I praise him, and that's why I worship him. See, a lot of people honor God with their mouth, but their heart is far from them. Come on here, the heart, heart, heart is far from God. I think about here, let's go to John. I got so much to go here and I better get on with this thing. I'm going to go to John chapter, let's go to John chapter 4. Let's read the 23rd and 24th verse. Here Jesus finds a woman. She's a sinful woman. She done been married five times and she's shacked up with a man that's not her husband now. I'm just being plain. That's what the book says. Amen. The Bible, Jesus, she met a man that told her all about her. And here it says, The hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Rem remember what I started with. You were created to worship. When I was with me and Kimberly were witnessing to that woman this week, we were, there, was, there was turmoil in her life and there was a, an emptiness and a void and we're just just like I've, somebody told us when we were out in the world, that nothing you can do will satisfy that outside of a relationship with the Lord. This woman that Jesus is talking to here is a, is a beautiful story. The one, it's called the woman at the well. And, and she's, at, she's at the well in the middle of the day, and Jesus comes up, and he starts uh, telling her all that she's ever done. And she, she realizes what a sinful woman that she, she is, but she's been given the opportunity uh, to meet the master. And everything that she's tried to find happiness is in has not worked. She's been married five times. Bless her heart. I was reading a story about in, in the news, unrelated to anything, but anybody remember Zaza Gabor, a movie actress from back in the day? Married nine times. I don't know about you, but husband number seven or eight, I'd have thought, well, that. This woman been married five times. And Jesus is telling her, now I'm going to tell you something. And, he's, and I, we don't have all the details, but he's letting her know you're not going to find happiness in that. But what you will find happiness and com contentment and what will fill that void. I've said this from this pulpit 50 times probably since I've been here. When I got saved, listen to me, when I got saved, when, I tr when, tr when the Lord truly got a hold of my life and changed me, the very first thought I had, this is what I have been looking for all of my life. If you believe that and that happened to you, would you lift your hand? This is what you were looking for. This is what satisfies. This is what brings me contentment. This is what brings me purpose. The age-old questions that the philosophers have been trying to answer since the ancient days is what is the meaning of life? I can tell you right now I've got the answer, amen. It is that Jesus is looking for and searching for true worshipers, those that will worship him in spirit and in truth, amen. Here I am, Lord, look no further. I'm here, Lord God. Here I am to worship worship you. I want you to leave out of here today and understand you're not your own. You've been bought with the price. 
You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God sent his son Jesus Christ that you might be saved and live for him. You know, that person on the inside of you, that soul and spirit, your soul and spirit never dies, people. It's going to live eternally somewhere. Yet this body is going to get. I was in Sister Betty's house this week, visiting with the family, visiting with her just hours before she died. And, 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 and I'm looking at the pictures on the wall, Sister Betty, when she was a young woman. I said, how old were you there, Sister Betty? She said, I was in my 30s before she had that black beehive rocking. And you know, there now she's frail at the end of her life. She don't look the same. That soul and spirit still the same. Come on here. He said, I'm looking for those that will worship me in spirit and in truth. I said, Sister Betty, you, you, you ready? I knew she was ready. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. She told all of her youngers, I'm ready. See, when you, when you truly know the Lord and you worship him and you are worship, you don't fear death because whether you live or die, you're his. I know, listen, you know, I'm not lined up. I'm not standing in the line or wherever that line is saying, take me next, Lord. No, I don't mean, probably none of us are. And we want to live and want to enjoy our families and our lives. And those of you with small children and, you know, I, I want to see my daughter grow up. I want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, walk her down the aisle when she gets married at age 33. I want to hold my grandbabies. Come on here now. And I can tell you whether we live or die. Whether we live or die, those of us that know that our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, we trust God with everything. Come on now. Whether we live or die, we belong to Him. We're going with Him. Come on, church, and say amen. We honor God sometime with our mouths, but not with our heart. God's looking for those that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. You say, well, Brother Bateman, I, I may, I can, maybe I'm, I'm not one of them that can really sing. I understand. Maybe you don't want, you're not one of those that can teach. Sister Kim's in the back working, so I'm going to get her right quick. She's not here. I got in trouble last week. I've given her a break for a lot of weeks here, months. Sister Kim can't sing. She let me know in a minute, I ain't singing for you. I'm singing for him. Come on here. She'll worship. Even if we don't like it, and I mean, me and Annika, we'll be riding down the road, and she'll be singing, and we'll look at each other and say, oh, mercy. She'll keep right on singing. And let me, I'm trying to encourage you this morning. If you can't, you sing, you sing for him. If you can't play like Sister Ellen can, you live. Some of y'all got on me. Sister Jeannie got on me. She said, don't you tell Sister Kim she can't sing. Honey, she can't sing, Sister Kim. <laughs> you might not lead anything in this church. You may, you may feel like, you may feel like that you don't have any talents or any abilities to, to be in any of the positions and, and we all have our place. But I can tell you what every one of us can be, and that is a worshiper. We can worship the Lord because that's what you're created to do. I remember I was coming back from a, a revival one time, and I was playing a, 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 a preaching tape, and uh, I was on I-95, and uh, Man, and you know, I, I, I don't mess around when I get on the interstate now. I scoot now. I'm just going to tell you. I, I keep it legal, but it's barely, all right? And coming down 95, and the Spirit of the Lord fell in that place, and I began to cry, and I began to worship God, and it was so strong, I pulled over off the side of the road, 
got out on that side of I-95, lifted both hands and began to walk around that vehicle and begin to worship the Lord. You say, all oh, that, you don't have to do all that. Maybe you don't, but I'm telling you something right now. If you could see where Jesus brought me from and where I am today, come on here. I am not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is looking for radical people that love him and that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Revelation chapter 4. This is a scene in heaven. If you don't like worship here, you're not going to like heaven because they worship in heaven. Matter of fact, there are cherubims, created beings, an angelic-like being. I understand everybody don't know all the terms I'm using, so let me break it down as basic as I can. There are angelic-type beings that are right in the presence of God right this moment. You hear me? right this moment, that fly around the throne of God. You say, Brother Bateman, what are you, right in the Bible, in Isaiah and in Revelation, I'm going to read it to you if i got time here. And they fly around and they cry, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty that was and is and is to come. Come on here now. You know, I, and people say, well, does God have to have? Created beings can't, they are in his presence and they can't do anything but say, Holy, 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 Lord God. When I get in his presence, all I can do is lift my, sometimes I can't even speak. Sometimes I can't do nothing but cry, amen, because he is worth, he is holy, holy, holy. They worship him right now, right now. Jesus said it this way. They, the, the religious leaders of that day said, tell your disciples they, they need to cut all this out. He said, let me tell you something. If they don't praise me, they don't worship me, the rocks will cry out. You know, somebody said, do you really believe that's literal? I actually believe that's literal. I believe to the very core of my being that if somehow, some way, those disciples and those people of that day shut up their mouths and, and would not worship and cry out and praise the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe the rocks would have split and begin to worship the King of glory. Come on and say amen. Jesus, these rocks will cry out, amen. I'm going to tell you, you've heard a song and you've heard it preached here before. I ain't going to let no rock cry out for me while there's breath in my body. I'll praise him. I'll thank him. I'll glorify him. Come on. Some of you are worried about what somebody else might think. Who cares, amen. I am created to worship him. Revelation chapter 4, and I this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show these things which must be hereafter. And immediately we're seeing God is giving us a glimpse here of what's going on in the heavens. He said, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in the heaven, and one that sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight unto an emerald. Keep going. Round about the throne were the four and twenty elders. And upon the seats I saw these elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Come on. And out of the throne proceeded lightning, thunderings, voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass. This is an innumerable number of people that cannot be numbered. I want you to see this. This sea of glass is a mass of humanity, of people. And like unto a crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, or a, a better translation would be four living creatures, four angelic type creatures, full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts each had of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not. Did you hear me? They rest not from eternity past right this moment to eternity future. No matter where you, listen to me real quickly, no matter what happens to you, whether you go to heaven or you go to hell, a million years from now, this is seen as be going on. It was going on 20 billion years ago. It's going on right now, and they rest not day and night, and they say, holy, holy, holy. 
holy. Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Come on here, church. And when those four living creatures or beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are created. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say it like, Lord, Thou art worthy. Hallelujah. Close with this, Sister Ellen, if you'll come back. A true worshiper. I think today, the, the hour that we live in, you know, just when we think we're, we're you know, things are, and I, I still want us, we still want, we need to be careful with this, still with this COVID. It's, it's still nothing to, 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 we gotta be, still got to be careful, you know, people don't get so close to each other, you know, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, let's, let's mask up if you want to. I mean, we, we, we're still living in that day and hour. I want you to understand that. And just when you think things are getting better, you know, I, I'm not recommending this. You can't get in there anyway. The only reason I get in is because I'm clergy and I've got a vital badge. And I walk them hospital halls. I go to all of them around here. They're full of people dying, this and that. A lot of them are dying of COVID. We, God's looking for some people that can worship even in the bad times. Let me tell you something. The children of Israel, I got to hurry God delivered them out of bondage. They were slaves. Less than human, basically. Treated badly by the Egyptians. God brought them out of Egypt. Mighty, one of the mightiest miracles you'll ever see. God split the Red Sea and they walked across on dry ground. They got on the other side. They had a time. Goodbye. You know what? Many of you know, just for the sake of you that don't know, the Egyptian army came through the sea after the children of Israel came through on dry ground. Then God closed the waters up and wipe out the greatest army on the face of the earth. Just like that. God delivered them. And on the other side, the Bible tells us that Miriam and the sister of Moses took a tambourine and the other women. And boy, they had a shouting time. The Bible even records the song that they sang. I wish I had a tambourine right now. Woo! Praise God. God throwed the horse and the rider in the sea. God had delivered us. Woo! We serve a mighty God. Oh, I can just see. There could have been as many as three million people that crossed over on dry ground. Dancing and shouting and praising and worshiping God who delivered them. Three days later, they were murmuring. Do you hear me? Three days later, the Bible said they bitterly mourned against the God that brought them out. God's looking for people that will worship Him before the victory, during the tribulation, and on the other side, I got any worshipers here. We're in a mess, but I'm still going to praise Him. Worship, we got to learn to trust God no matter what our situation is. Worship is a way of life. You and I that are true worshipers, we're able to rest because of the trust. Our trust in God is unshakable. Now you can you can act like you you can act all big and bad and strong if you want to, but during this COVID mess, every time we got a sniffle or a call for a sneeze, it comes to our mind. Come on here. And every time any of us have gotten the COVID, we think. Come on here. There's so much fear. 
There's so much doubt. There's so much unbelief out. The world is in a mess. But those of us, our trust in God is unshakable. Come on here. God, I'm going to trust you. Come on here. Whether I live or die. I'm going to worship you, Lord, whether I live or I die. I had a friend of mine. She said, dear saint of God, some of you know her. She used to teach, you know her, Peggy Griffin. Used to teach over there at Emmanuel. Is that the name of it, Emmanuel? I was talking to her one day, and she was very sick. She was going to die eventually, not too long after that. She said, the doctor said to her, you're not going to be with us much longer. She said, you ain't scaring me. She said, a promotion don't scare me. You just threatening me with a promotion. That's when you know you trust God. I want you to stand. I'm going to close. Live or die belong to God. How many of you know this morning that he that has begun a good work in you is going to finish it? A true worshiper just doesn't dance after the victory. We, don't, we just don't sing because the enemy has been defeated. People that do that, they just shallow shouters. One preacher said they're shallow shouters. And I can worship him right in the middle of the storm. I'm going to. Because he said, I'm seeking those. God said this. Jesus said this to the woman at the well. The Lord seeks those that will worship him in spirit and truth. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, you don't have to leave. Please don't. We're just going to be here just a few more minutes.